everyone, welcome to the studio. Uh, today I'm going to be doing the reflection one, the little white boat in the Huon River. So I've just got that up on my board here, taped on. Next to it I've got a bit of paper. This is oil and acrylic sketch paper, so it's got a small canvasy feel to it. I've only done canvases for you up to now, so today I'm going to do a, a um, paper and next time I'll try and do a board for you. I'm just going to do it small today uh, because small is not a bad thing. It's a good way to practice various techniques and it helps uh, that you don't have to commit to a very large painting and lots of time so you can practice small techniques and then scale them up if you want to. And not all of us want to paint big. Sometimes I really enjoy a small one. One of the important things when we're getting set up is to scale our painting, our reference up. So if I'm happy with this, which I am, I'm going to pretty much leave it where it is. I may move the boat slightly because here the boat is dead centre if we split the painting in there. So I may well move the boat a little bit that way or a little bit that way and maybe slightly further up. I don't want to overlap it onto these reflections so it's not going to go up into the reflections. I want it to be clear on its own but it may go up slightly and across slightly. We'll think about that as we go which is probably not the way I've taught you. <laughs> we should plan it out first but what I'm going to do with this is use the little technique of painting everything first and then making a little cut out of my boat and moving it around till I'm sure it's where I want it to be. I've got a tiny little scrap of the paper there just so I can test colours on it if I want to. And now to square it up, this is one of the things that the students in my physical class actually struggle with. They'll take the painting and reference in this format which they want to replicate exactly and then they'll try and put it on this format and you can see that this format is longer and uh, the ratio to length and width is different than this one so what I do is I just take it and align the corners here just put it on with a little bit of tape Use this, and then run a ruler from one corner through the other corner right down to the side there and I make a little mark there and then all I need to do is draw straight across the bottom. I'm using my square here so I get it nice and straight. And that's the proportions I need to paint in. So remember to do that, otherwise you start to elongate things if it's a longer format than your reference and everything starts to look a little bit out of whack. So just remember to square it up first. I've now got a little bit of space down here that I can practice my colours on as well. And then what I do is just take my masking tape. Because this is not pastel paper, I'm always telling you to use a delicate tape on the pastel paper, it pulls off much more cleanly so I don't worry about using delicate. That's just to preserve a nice white area around all the edges. It just looks more professional. That will keep it nice and clean. Now I've sized it up so it's going to replicate the format of my reference image and I'm ready to go. Today I'm trying a new thing. I have another camera set up over here which you can't see that's going to be looking at the palette so you can see the colour mixing. We'll see how that goes. It's my old dodgy camera. I'm, I'm filming with my new camera and I'm trying this with my old dodgy camera so we'll see how that goes. Over here I've got my palette and I'll just be loading on a few more colours. What I'm wanting are some earth colours and some green. So I've got some earth colours out here. This is left over from my last uh, painting but that's okay. So I've got some earth colours set up down here. I've got some greens and yellows here. I'll be adding some blues for the sky, water and the blues, the darker blues in the hills there. So I'll put some blues, I've got some purple here that will help with those darker areas and some white for the boat. So I'll just add those extra colours in. Let's get started. I'm just taking a small round brush 
very small one, and I'm going to just rough in the shapes that I want there. And I'm going to do that just by mixing up a small, neutrally kind of colour here, using some ultramarine blue, some burnt umber, and a little bit of burnt sienna there. And that just gives me a neutral kind of shape, a uh, colour. And I don't want very much sky in this, so I'm just putting in uh, some of the line up there. And that's going to be uh, the skyline there. Then I'm, I'm looking down here to see how far down. It's about a third down. I've got the water's edge. So that's just gently being put in. This is very light. And then I'm going to have uh, a corresponding reflection. Now, <coughs> it's hard to tell at the, with the reference one. I'll pull it a little bit closer for you. In the reference, it's difficult to tell the depth because across here, there's a little bit of um, marshlands almost, some reed um, islands there right close to the shore. So I just need to be careful about that and you can have a look on the reference when you... Uh, but now what I'm going to do is, is it'll be the same distance there from the shoreline. So it's going to be about there. And I'm just popping that in and it's just the reverse of that. Uh, and then through here there's the little island of a couple of little island, reedy islands and they're going to go in a little bit more I'm going to give them then uh, quite a not such a thin line so that I can really see where they go and then this one goes here and probably that needs to be a bit lower so I'm just continually looking at it and changing it so that's going to be the the main elements there and then the boat's going to go in somewhere down here but I'm going to put everything else in and then do the boat last of all and I'm going to do one of those little cut out shapes and move it around so let's just start with the sky I'll just use a smaller smaller flat brush there for the sky just mixing up a little bit of sky colour so it's cerulean with a touch of the phthalo blue to get that summer look and then I'm adding in there are some clouds in the sky, but first I want to put the sky colour in and then I'll add the clouds into them. So it's just going to be quite light. I'm just mixing that around with my brush and you can see I'm not mixing it all the way with my brush. I just want to have it a varied colour. Then it just, I'm just washing it on to that sky area. I don't care if I come a little bit down into the hills there. Now to get the clouds, so that's a little summery sky, but it is was quite cloudy and overcast. So what I'm going to do now is add a, a tiny touch, just the hint of purple into that blue, into a corner of the blue, into purple, and then I'm going to go back in with that for the cloudy look. And I'm just putting my brush in different directions and stroking it into the sky colour and not worrying too much about the shape of those clouds. Then I'm taking a little bit of white and putting back into that. I don't want it pure white but I want some little lighter parts of the clouds there so just putting those in over the hill there. And again not worrying about replicating the photo for the clouds. I just want the idea of a cloudy sort of Day there. So I've got some clouds in now. That was pretty quick wasn't it? Now I want to drop those same colours down into my water because I don't want to lose them. So I'm using them while I've got them. I'm taking the blues and I'm going to drop them all down into my water there. Now this is where uh, you might want to add a little bit of gloss in here. So this is the acrylic gloss medium and what it does is it makes your paint flow better. So I'm just pouring a little bit of it into 
I need some more. Here we go, coming out. Just pouring some into one of the whorls on my palette and mixing a little bit of it in with there. And it will just help it flow better and you can see immediately how it flows much better. Now these are, this is the sky colour reflecting in the, oh I've got a hair in there. When you've got a cat in the house, sometimes you do get hairs. So these are reflections, reflections come down, these are reflections of the sky colour, so I'm just painting them down. Later on I'll add in some horizontal strokes, but not right now. So I'll cross just to get that edge and I'm pulling them down. And I'm going to be adding in some whites, that purpley white mixture too. I need a little bit more mixing up, so I just take some more of those colours, mix them together. I'm dipping my brush into these colours, but when I'm using the white, I am using the palette knife because I just don't want to contaminate it. So mix that in. A little bit of the medium. The sky colour will become darker and deeper as it comes closer towards you, the viewer. So I've mixed a bit darker coming up there. Now I need to put some of those clouds in as well because it's not a really total blue sky there. I don't mind that I'm coming up into the shrub, what's going to be the hillside. What I need now is some more of the grey clouds, so I'm just mixing up a little bit of that. And then I'm going to start adding those in. So the river colour kind of changes there. A little bit more white. And then I'm, I'm trying to make it like it's clouds. So I'm not doing one, I was doing with the sky colour one brush down and up like that in an unbroken line. But here I want to break it up because the clouds are going horizontal and they're not dropping the whole way down. So I'm just now putting on patches to suggest clouds in the sky. And with the same brush that I used for the sky up there. A little bit more white more purple and you can really just dip your brush into the purple it's hardly anything I want at all of it and the clouds are all around the top of the hill there so I'm making more clouds up here I can go back in with a bit more sky colour and start planting a little bit of that in around the clouds so that I've got a darker area down here. And I'm setting up a bit of a darker area where I think the boat is going. And I think the boat's going to move slightly over this side. So I'm making a little bit of a darker sky colour area there so that the boat is going to reflect well against it. The thing about using gloss medium is it, it does show your brush strokes more, so um, just be aware of that and lift lift the brush off rather than coming down, stopping and pulling it off and you can get a big mark when you do that. So I'm just gently pulling it down and gently pulling it out into thin air. You will probably notice that your paper is going to start buckling a little bit and it will do that because you're loading all the water into it from the uh, paint brush on the, the paint on the brush. I don't worry about that if I'm doing a very big one I'm going to stretch it and staple it onto something so it, it will straighten out again. I don't worry about this. I've actually found that I've actually found that if when you're finished you leave it usually under some heavy weights like some books it will straighten out. If it doesn't, I just turn it over, put some 
cloth over it and iron it on the reverse side and that a small one that will flatten it out so tip for the day okay I've got the water in now and the sky I can play around with those colors um, they're actually looking brighter on the video than they are in real life so it's a dull day so I might just add a little bit more purple into that mix and purple eyes up some of the clouds that's a bit too purple there we go that's better so just giving it a little bit of variety there and I'll keep pulling it and pushing it with the brush until I'm happy with the softness of the clouds and that the colors are right just uh, going to get some more of those clouds in and soften them up a little bit there maybe some down here and just keep those reflections keep those reflections nice and soft so I'm popping away at it with my brush just mixing them in with the brush moving the clouds around as I go so they've got a bit of variety in the reflections but that they do resemble clouds just darkening up a couple of these clouds here then some lighter edges on them exaggerating those clouds a little bit now so it's hard to see that's a little bit better and when I've exaggerated them there I then need to exaggerate them in the water so I'll make them a little bit wider around the edges So you can spend a little bit of time on the clouds, just getting them the way you want them, softening them out. It's starting to dry a little bit down there, so I'm just pushing a little bit harder with my brush to, to get those clouds not sitting on top of the water. Softening them off a little bit, but trying to keep a little bit of colour variation within them. You don't want it all to be just, you know, purple, dark, or all white. You want it to have a little bit of colour variation within it. Down in this corner I want it to be a little bit bluer so just going back in with a, a blue. And now some longer brush, stroke, brush strokes there where there aren't so many clouds. Now I've got the sky and the cloud uh, sky and the water part of the water that's reflecting the sky in I'm going to wash the brush uh, because we don't want the paint to dry on it's hard to get out and then we'll start working on the hills for the hills I'm just going to use a little flat small brush it's a small painting surface area so I could use that or I could, could use one of my palette knives and I'll probably do a little bit of both. What I like about the palette knife is you can make good marks with it. It's got some lovely straight edges so it's very easy to get a long straight edge. So for example along here I might use it to pull up some colour for the edge of there. So let's start with that. I'm going to take out a little bit of my yellow ochre. One more colour I want to add to that mix. I'm 
I'm going to add in a bit more of my yellow ochre and a bit of Naples yellow. I apologise for the difficulty in getting my head in as well. It's such a small painting, I need to zoom right in and then you kind of uh, miss, miss seeing me talking to you. It's just his voice, but um, that's the best I can do with this small one for the moment. Ladling out some more of this paint onto my palette. And sometimes I will mix. Sometimes I'll mix with the palette knife instead of the brush. So that's what I'm doing now. Yellow ochre and a bit of Naples yellow. Give that a mix up. And probably divide that up a bit. And into that one, I'm just going to add a little bit of a ready colour too. I just want to change it slightly, so I'm adding in some of the red. So that what I end up is with a few piles of different yellows there. There we go. And now I want to make some of the the bluey. So there's a bright green which is going to be some of this forest green and a little touch of this limey sort of green and then I'll add in some cad yellow light mix it around and that's going to be the bright green of the paddocks I need more of that so let's go make a decent pile of it Using the straight out of the tubes greens can look quite unnatural, but then if you modify them with something else, so the yellow has helped that. I might, I might get just a slight bit more of the yellow in. So now I've got a little pile of green to be using for the, the brighter patches of green. And then what I want is a darker green. So I'm taking my very dark green here. Mixing that up with a bit of the ultramarine blue. But as it goes back, I want it to become a little bit darker and bluer. I might even put a touch of the purple in that one. So that's my very dark blue. So now I'm going to paint that in. I'll just be using, uh, starting off, I'll be painting in the hills now, the hill reflection. I'm just using that small flat to start with. I'm go going to start with just the horizon there, and that's going to be the dark green. And in fact, I'm going to just try to get it down there. It's one green. That's my bright green. I'm happy with the bright green and that's fine for some of it, but what it actually needs is a bit more of the ready colour in it. So it's popping a bit of that in. Let's try that. Now I like that better. And then I want some of it to have more of the blue in it. So I'll blue off a bit over on this side. So that's uh, the range of greens I've got plus some yellows, yellow ochre with a bit of the sienna and then the yellow ochre with the naples yellow. So they're the colours I'm going to be using up in the hills. I still think some of that needs to be, I'm just adding a bit more purple into that one. Okay, and then I need one of them to be a little bit softer as it goes back so what I'm going to do is just take some of that one and add it into a bit of my sky colour. 
to make it a bit lighter as it goes back. So there's going to be a little bit of a, a lighter patch back there. It may even be bluer than that. it starts to become darker as we come forward. I'm just patting it on. It's going to pat on all the way up there. And I don't want it to go out the corner so I'm just uh, bringing it in before it hits the corner edge there and to get those nice uh, tree tops I'm just patting it on with a kind of circular motion and then it skips over the surface and creates the tree tops with some sky holes coming through so that's just all going to be that going down there they kind of mix in a little bit with the background there now I want to put in where the yellow is going to go. I'm going to be using my palette knife for that, the edge of it. I'm going to start off with along the water there and here it goes in. I'm thinking I still haven't made that long enough or that long enough so I, I might change things a bit. I think that's going to be the the water's edge along there. I just load, I load it up and then I drag it along and because it's a nice flat edge it's just depositing it along the riverbank there and I get a nice straight edge. Some of that, which I'm just lifting off now, is going to come down in, in this area as reflection so I'm pulling a bit of that colour straight down into the reflection area along there. What I want to do now before I get too confused, I'm adding a bit more blue into there for the reflections, the bluer, as I'm going to bring that down a bit lower now. Should be more like there. So it's quite easy to correct as you go. I'm just pulling that down and it's mixing in with a bit of the blue from that, the sky colours underneath it and I don't mind that. What it's doing is making it a little bit lighter and most reflections of darker objects are a little bit lighter. So that's making it a little bit lighter. And bluing it off a bit which is also something else I want. So along we come and just pop, patting it on and pulling it off will make the little edges of the trees again down here in the water. The reflections are not as um, they're softer, they're more fuzzy softer than the, the hill itself so, so by mix, letting it mix with that sky colour underneath it's, it's softening them off a bit a little bit lighter, a little bit softer, a little bit fuzzier, so you don't want the detail that you're going to have up in the hills there. Just keep pulling it down. And softening it off along the edges there as well. Keep building up the colours up here. It's got a little, doing a little bit of drawing now with my brush to try and remind me where the major lines of these bushes go. I'm just using the brush like a drawing instrument. There are more trees down this way. I'm going to put in some more of the yellow uh, paddocks up there now so that it keeps me in going in the right spot. So there's one there. It's fine that it's picking up some of the colour behind it because it just gives you a bit of colour variation in it and you don't want it to be all the same. So you don't mind that. 
and use your brush to describe the direction things are going in. So as with if you're pastel painting, any sort of painting, use actually using whatever you're painting with, whether it's a brush or a palette knife, to move the paint in the direction that the object is in the plane that it's in. So here I'm moving it. These are horizontal fields of grass. I'm moving it horizontally. Just getting in those shapes of the various paddocks there. There's another one there going across. Some more paddocks there. That's pretty much all paddocks going across there. There's a big tree there, so you can't see a lot of it, but you need to make it up and paint behind it because otherwise there'll be gaps in there. So that's getting in the, the yellows, and now I need to pop them down into the bottom here. So whereas the whereas the darks are a little bit lighter, the lights will be a little bit darker. So that's quite light, so I'm just darkening it up slightly. And then I'm going to pick out the colours and the shapes again. So Here's that shape. And remember to reverse your angles, so I don't want to be painting that way. If that's sloping that way, it has to paint in the opposite direction. It's a mirror image, so it's reversed when you're painting it. Over here I've got another bit of yellowish sort of colour coming in. And again it needs to be slightly darker, so I've just mixed in a little bit of um, a darker sienna colour in there and just looking for the shapes and trying to to follow up with those. You won't see exactly the same in the reflection because there are some little islands of reeds across there. I'm going to put those in with the palette knife. I want to start with a dark edge to it. So just a bit of a dark brown coming out there. And there's the first one coming across there. I'm just dragging across a darker colour there. And there will be another one that's coming across here. Grab a little bit more of the dark. And just load up the brush, the palette knife tip with that and then dragging that across. So another way to apply it is to put it on the tip, the tip there and then just to pull it up rather than dragging it across. So you can pull it up like so making little nice little edges to the reed islands. And I'm going to look, use a little bit of that technique back here too for some trees. So picking up some of the paint and there's some little shrubby bits around here so I'm just pulling those up along there. You get a nice crisp bottom to that, which is what you want, because it's all this, the bottom of the shrubs and the whatever. And there we go, that's, that's making those shrubs come in there. So I can use the palette knife or I can use the brush as well, like so. So whatever you're comfortable with. But I, I suggest you try a few different uh, ways of doing it so that you just learn a few different techniques because sometimes the brush is better and sometimes the palette knife is better. You can see now I'm just putting in some of those trees and shrubs and building up, building up the little patchwork of the landscape which I'm trying to remember to keep reflecting down here so I'm actually going to take 
my palette knife and pull some of those edge reflections down. And I'm quite happy that they're mixing with some of the yellow ochre because again they need to be slightly lightened up and the yellow ochre is doing that. So that's just pulling some of the reflections down there from the reed beds. Um, the, that reed bed needs a little bit of the rushes along the back, so that's going to be this yellow ochre colour. So I'm just adding those in by sliding, loading it up, the paint, and sliding across the top to make the reed beds on these little islands. Same there. And again, you can do it with your brush if you want to. You can pull up with the brush, making those kind of marks, which are quite good for reeds. So I'm doing some of those there because this is a reed bed that's a little bit closer. The other one's further away and you only see that as a flat line, whereas here it's closer to, and you can see some of the marks of the reeds there. Okay, so that's the little reed islands in there. Then we need to distinguish uh, some water in between it. So clean off the brush, back into some sky colour. And I'm just going to drag a little bit of sky colour through there. And you can see it's picking up some of the colour from the reflections of the marshes. I don't mind that. It gives you a bit of variety in your water. Keep cleaning your brush off in between. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I'll probably add a little bit more blue in later but for now that's a little touch of blue and I'll probably put a small touch of that blue closer back to the land back here. So that we can see there are little islands here close to shore. Unless you're a photo, unless you're a photorealist painter and that's your style, you don't need to get everything exact. And the more you try and get it exact, uh, I think the more you overwork the painting. So, go for the general shapes and the general colours, and and make sure your values are good. And it's going to look like the place you're trying to represent. The more you try and get every little detail, every tree in the right spot, every branch in the right spot, the more you overwork it. So, let's try and keep it a little bit loose and go for the general look of the place. Looking very abstract up in there, but I will be adding a whole lot more into it. I'm just trying to get those general shapes in. So now we want to do a bit of infill here. I'm going to do some of the brighter greens. So there's some brighter green paddocks in here. And they're just going in. And a more bright green area here. A little bit of a brighter green up there. So now I need to bring those brighter green colours down into the reflections and I'm paying attention to where they're falling here so there's a bit of brighter green here in this area and uh, that area there has a bit of brighter green and we can't, we can just maybe make out a little bit of that can't make out that because the island is stopping us seeing that. So the other thing to watch for is you're looking there, but you've made some changes here, so now when I look at it, I'm seeing that what I've done, this should be lower down, because this needs to be higher up above it. 
you can see that green paddock is higher above that so I'm just moving that green paddock up and that is going to be more yellow so we'll make that more yellow so it's, you need to be looking and observing all the time there's a bit of yellow separating out those two so and then the yellow comes down like that and across The interactive, the interactive paints stay wet, the Atelier Interactive, stay wet a lot longer. So I can soften this all off into reflection and softness very shortly. I just need to get all the colours in and then I'll do a bit of softening off. Now I need to be adding in some more of the dark. So let's go and start putting in some of the darks coming down there in the, the form of the trees. I'm just doing this with my brush. I'm making sure that I cover up all the white. I don't want any of the white. It's quite distracting, so I don't want that showing through. There's a whole lot more of the trees coming over here and just dabbing them on with my brush. If you're using a Stay Wet palette, there can be some issues with uh, the the palette being very moist and that thins your paint down so you might need to thicken it up a little bit more as you go but it's very handy for keeping the paint moist and workable if you're going off doing things in between so just adding in some trees the, the illusion of trees by patting it on pulling it off lift, patting and lifting and then we get some sort of tree shapes there more trees coming up here Keeping the tops nice and rounded and irregular, but the bottom of it is, is fairly flat because that will be the shadowed area. Getting in some darker patches of trees there. And up above these ones. The hill is beginning to look like a hill. I'm going to mix some of the brighter green in with the darker green so I get an intermediate green. I don't want it too dark, don't want it too light. And that's going to be some of these other trees coming in here. Add a little bit of the colour into here too. Remember acrylics usually dry a little bit darker than they go on. So you might, might need to be aware of that. And, and make it slightly uh, lighter than you want it and then it will turn out right in your final one. So just patting on the paint again to give me the illusion of trees. You can see that these these browns that I've put in, the, the, the grassy cut sort of colours, dry paddock grasses, have dried a little bit uh, darker than I probably want in some places, so I'll probably lighten some of those up. And now to get the little hedgy bits in between the paddocks, it's just dip your paint in the brush, the really thin end, and then kind of draw them across. There's another lot coming down through there with the tip of your brush. So the hill's nearly done there. Let's add in some here where we can't really see behind the trees. Pull a little bit of that colour down into the water there. And some of that, those darker tree colours, will pull down into the water a little bit there too. I'm 
going through now and tidying up some of the areas up here. I want that to be sort of a square edge to the paddock. Um, with all the the yellow is escaping out there. That really should be lower. And there should be more of that paddock. So you, this is where you start just refining it a little bit. So yeah. now that that should be lower. I'm just going back in with my paintbrush and and working out where things should be. And then there's a little bit of the lighter paddock in here. A little bit lower down. And then I'm going to dip back into the very dark to do my edges along the paddocks again because I just lost them. So here we go. Little bits of edges along the paddock. A little another one up here. A bit down there. And that one down there. And another one down there. So the hill pretty much looks like a hill. This needs a lot more dark in it, so now I'm going back in and trying to put in some of the darks that I need in there. Putting in some of those darks. Down, letting them mix. And doing all that with that little flat brush. There will be some little jewelry colours in there of some houses, so they'll be coming in soon. Just doing all those reflections in there now. get that nice soft now I want to get that nice soft look and you get a reflection so I've just dampened off my I'm just going to get a slightly bigger brush bigger brush softer brush that's dry I just drag it over them and it kind of drags the I'm doing that all in a downward motion. It's trying to soften off the edges. And it all becomes a little bit more blurred. There we have the general reflections. Uh, and we can do a bit of squinting and see if we think we've got the values right. And I think there's probably a little bit missing here and some dark. So we'll go back in with some of those darks and re-establish a few more darks.
a little bit of softening going on there. Now I'm going to do a few highlights up here in the fields, just with some little scrapes of the um, Naples yellow. And then a few of those are going to drop slightly down into, you see a few, a few bits of those coming through in here. And I will take a little bit more of the lighter colour along the tops of the red bits there. A little red island. Pulling those down. And another one here. So it's not this is not the straight Naples yellow, this is Naples yellow mixed with yellow ochre. Just to give a little bit of a, a lighter top to those. So we can see the reed beds now, we can see the reflections, there's a little bit of blue in there for the water. And I want to put in a little bit of a darker edge just along the water's edge there. One way you can create um, lines, uh, the horizontal, one way to create, one way to create the horizontal lines that was going to show the water surface is to use the tip, the very pointy tip of your palette knife and so maybe we want one, a sharper line along here, just draw into the wet paint do the same here. You can see how it makes little lines across the, the surface there. You can draw one in there. So that they're giving me some surface lines on the water, which are helpful in describing the flat surface of the water. Also, I can take that very sharp edge, pull myself up a bit of a darker colour. And you'll notice I just keep mixing the colours into my existing colours and then use that to give myself a little a bit of an edge along the waterway. Just lifting it, dabbing it and lifting it off. You get a nice irregular um, little water's edge, which is how it actually is. It's not just a straight line. So there I can, I've got my little water's edge. I can add some more of that in if I like to which I do, I do like, to add a little bit more of that into what the edges of my island because it's a little bit shadowed there underneath the reeds at the bottom. I'm just putting that in to help delineate it a bit more. And just with that, if you don't have a palette knife, if you don't have a palette knife, just an old credit card or a current credit card you can clean up. Or a piece of, a little off cut of thick card that it's got a thick edge, a little bit flexible. That's all you need, something sharp and flexible, a little bit of give in it. And then load up the edge and just dab it on and off. So now I've got some good edgy bits. I've got the reflections coming down, the sky. What I need to think about now is that boat and where I'm going to put it. Just cleaning, resting my brushes in the water bucket. Now I've got all the elements I want in there. I've got the sky, the sky water reflected. You can see it's a different kind of painting. I've sunnied it up a little bit. You can do that or you can be true to the original, whatever you want to do. Uh, I've got in the hills and the reflections, I've got some nice little edges along the rushes and reed beds there. Now I'm going to make that little boat and we'll move it around a bit and see if we can find... I'm now going to get the little boat done. 
on a piece of cut out paper and move it around and see where I like it the best. Okay, back with you soon. So here I am back again. I just magged up a photocopied it, magnifying up to roughly that size. Then I, oops, here I am back again. I photocopied this, magging up to uh, almost the same size as that. Then I cut out the little boat. So you can draw the little boat, paint it in watercolour or acrylic or whatever, and then move it around. But it's very quick to do it this way, just to give so you can get an idea of where you want to place it. Here I've got it, and then if I place it about there, get that original photo back for you. If I place it there in the middle, that's where it was proportionally in the other one. Um, I actually quite like it in the middle. <laughs> so compositionally wise, we're taught don't put things in the middle of the painting. I actually quite like it there, uh, and although the boat's right in the middle, the brightest part of the boat is off to the side, and there'll be a little boy out there, or buoy, however you say them in your language and dialect, there'll be a little buoy or boy out there which is very white uh, and the lightest part, so the centre of interest is kind of going there. Now if we move the boat around, I could move it more off centre and move it further up there. And then with the dark tree overlaying it, that could work as well. As you can see what I'm doing, I'm just trying to get a feel. I don't really want it down off to the centre down here, because it's just really taking me out of the painting. I could put it up further so it's overlapping in the shadows of the hill and the and then into the water there. And that could be quite effective because you've got the white hull of the boat against the, the deep dark uh, trees there. So I could put it there, but I actually liked, that's what drew me to the scene in the first place, having the, it's a little bit of blue tack I'm using to, to put it on, was just the, the boat in the clear blue, with all the clear blue water around it. And I keep being drawn back to where it was in the middle for some reason. I liked it like that. And I think I'm probably just going to leave it there. So moving it around does help you, uh, having a little cut out and moving it around does help you kind of visualise better than just thinking about it. You could do the same with lots of thumbnails but I find it easier to have my background and then uh, the little boat or bird or whatever that little small element is and just move it around until I find where I want it. So this is where I want it. If you want to get the shape exactly right and you don't want to mess it up you can always do the little grid method or you can um, take your photocopy and run a bit of graphite over the back, a bit of lead pencil and then draw around it, or you can just draw it freehand. Whatever you're doing, you want it to be able to see it quite clearly there. I hope you didn't miss this. The camera turned itself off. I've just put in the, the boat trim, the wooden trim with a, a burnt sienna colour, and I'm filling in the inside, the inner of the boat, with the cloud colour. So that just goes in there, and and you can use when you're putting that in to clean up the edges if you didn't get the curves quite right. The outside of the boat hole there, now the interesting thing about reflections is that as, as you're looking at this boat you're going to see more of the underside in the reflection than you actually see in real life. And that is one of the little mysteries uh, that you might have wondered about. Why is that happening? It's happening because you're seeing the boat as if, the reflection of the boat, as if you were looking at it from underneath the water. So that's why that happens. I'll talk more about that in the skill builders this month. For those of you who are on Patreon in the skill builder level, 
I'll be talking all about reflections this month in the Skill Builders. So I'm popping in that shadow line down the base of the boat and the shadow comes up and sort of makes a little curve there. And the river's very still, so we're getting a very true reflection of the boat. It's not really being distorted by wind, ruffling the surface. You can see I'm taking that dark blue and pulling it around. And as I pull it around, it's creating the little uh, lines on the body of the boat there. Now we can't really see this browner colour down in the boat here. Uh, reflection. It's the dark shadow underneath it, so it's a dark shadow on the rear of the boat there. And this part of the boat needs to be more shadowed, so Just adding in more shadow there with a purple, a little bit of purple mixed in with blue. do need possibly to let it dry a little bit more because it's just picking up the colour underneath it. So just be careful about that and decide if you need to let it dry a little bit before you add in more detail and I might need to do that with this one. So I'm getting that little V shape there that you get as the boat meets the water. It's generally dark in Darkening it up and darkening it up slightly there on the end of the boat as well, but not as much as the shadow. The boat's not quite right, and I'll be playing with it a bit more. I need to get the details right in the boat. So I'm just playing and playing and playing. And this is an important part because if I don't get the boat right, the whole painting will fail for me. So it, it, it does take some time and you need to be patient with it. I've got here a very fine rigger brush that I'm just bringing to a point, that I'll bring to a point with some moisture and then I'll try again to get exactly those details right. This might be where you need to think about adding a little bit of flow medium to help your that's starting to get it. I need the, the curve is what was wrong. So just by pulling it down a little bit and up, that is much more the shape of the boat. And then it comes down and a bit around as well. Maybe that's a little bit higher. So it's back and forth looking at your unit reference and then keeping on checking in that you're actually getting it right. Then I'm going to put a small shadow with my fine rigger 
啊。these little details when you're doing these little details this can be very handy let's just go out a bit so you can see when you're doing details this can be quite handy just a board with shorter boards either end. I've just terribly nailed them on. Oh dear, look at that. <laughs> it doesn't really matter how you do it. I just rest it then so that I can put my hand on here and draw without uh, things moving around without my hand touching the painting so it keeps the wet paint underneath clean and it helps to steady my hand. So I'll use that sometimes for details. You can see I just rest my hand there. Then I can get that fine line. And there's a little rollet there. A couple of little bits coming down in here. The ribs of the boat. And I'm just flicking those down with my little fine point. From the and that's giving me the inside. I'm using the fine point again to fix up here like that. And the little boy there. It's got a nice bright patch on it, and then it will have a shadowed side as well. And then it's got the reflections. So, put in the shadowed side. The reflections are going to be darker, so they won't be quite as bright as the top part, and the reflection side, the shadow side, is quite deeply dark there. So there goes the shadow side. And again these, when you're painting small, these little details can take you a time to, a little bit of time to do. Unless you're very, very impressionist, in which case you might not want to do all that, spend all that time on it, and you might want to see the impression of it. So I take it out with a wet brush a bit, and then I can add in a bit of the sky colour around it to, to clean it up a bit. starting to look better. Now I just want to take a little bit of that around, pull that around. That is looking much more like what I wanted it to look like. And the reflection again, not quite so bright. I'm using quite a loose mixture of 
plate there so I can just gently pull it around. that right out and then here it comes the reflection of it coming curving around attaching to the boat attaching to the boat that's the boat reflection all done around the edge there what I'm doing just really cleaning it up like so I'm putting in a cloud makes the back of the boat stand out Adds a bit to the cloud effect in the water. Just blending it in as I go. It looks quite light here, but it's going to dry a little bit darker than that, so I don't think it's too. too light because it, it will dry a little bit. Now my decision is going to be, do I really want to put in all these dark trees or am I going to leave it just as that reflection and I actually quite like it just like that without the dark branches over, over it. So perhaps that's what I'm going to do. In case you want to put in the dark branches, I'll just give you a little quick demo of how I would do it down on this piece of paper. It's pretty simple. I'm taking some purple and some of this dark brown and a little bit of the red mixing up a colour. I'll use my fine rigger and then so I'm just pulling down uh, make it nice and wet so it pulls nice and easy and, and wriggle it as you go like so to make those branches like so then you're going to want to add in the least and I've just got the flat one again and I'm using just the edge of it and then as you come further into the mass you can mash them all together so just the tips and the edges and move it around as you go like I am there and you'll get all the different shapes of the leaves and then you come into the whole more foliage there so you can just keep doing that as much as you like and bring it over the painting but I don't want to do it then. What I'm going to do now is just take the tape off so you can see the nice it looks so much better once you take your tape off. And you can see it peels off very easily having a nice clean edge around it. I hope you've enjoyed this little acrylic demonstration of how to paint reflections of a hill and a boat in the in a in a still river and you can see also from this demonstration that it's not necessarily right or needed to seriously follow your reference photo I wanted to sunny up the day a bit so I did I didn't like this big mass of dark trees around so I left them out you can make your own decisions and I'll be interested to see your paintings when you post them on the community page whether you've decided to leave in the dark trees which do give it some depth or whether you've left them out like me. I'll uh, see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.